right. Good afternoon. It is an honor for me to meet you here in the heart of Appalachia for the commencement or the beginning of the next two journeys of the class of 2018 from the Appalachian School of Law. It is a further honor for me to address what I consider what is most perhaps the most important class this school will ever know. I'm here to encourage the graduates to accept and embrace the underdog odds against you so that you pass the bar on your first try and you take that very first important step in discovering your sociological imprint. Merriam-Webster defines underdog in two ways. Number one, a predicted loser in a struggle. Or number two, a victim of injustice. You want to become a triumphant underdog. And you become a triumphant underdog by passing the bar exam and, and making your sociological imprint. To become a, a, a triumphant underdog, one must act with assiduous contravance, enduring drudgery, and faith. Underdogs act assiduously, or triumphant underdogs act assiduously or with great care and perseverance, and they also act with, they also contrive a plan with ingenuity. Triumphant underdogs are long-lasting workhorses, blue-collar, not afraid to get in the mud and work hard. That is what it takes to be a triumphant underdog. And obviously it takes faith. It takes a, an underdog to believe in themselves to become triumphant. And I noticed, I saw in some of your faces when I said some of these big words. I know, I realize that these words are big. And my wife even told me, she said, why are you using these big words? You're not a big word kind of guy. Heck, you probably had the worst LSAT score in this whole room. You can't use big words. And, and what I say to that is, it takes big words to define what it's going to take to overcome enormous odds and to become triumphant. To pass the bar exam, you are going to act with great perseverance and ingenuity and this assiduous contravance I'm talking about. You know that the bar exam is 80 days away. Yeah, it's 80 days away exactly for most of the states that you guys are taking them in. And from what I'm going to about to tell you, that equates to approximately 750 to 760 hours of study. All right? Now, when I tell you you're going to have to prepare for the bar exam with assiduous contravance, that means that you're going to have to look deep inside of you and, you, and, and discover what, what it takes to help you focus. Professor Gould can only teach you what to study. Only you can determine how to study. And what I'm going to suggest to you is a plan, and I know this is going to sound like a lot, of at least 10 to 12 hours of study a day. You are underdogs. You know that. You're underdogs for a reason. 10 to 12 hours a day, you are going to plan out for each of those 80 days. All right? And, and I'm not talking about when you study a passive studying. Friends and supporters, if you see your graduate come into the house and they're, and they're supposed to, this, they're within their 8 to 12 hours of study and they cozy up in their favorite chair and they, they put a hot, nice hot cup of cocoa next to them with a little bit of whipped cream and they prop their feet up. No, 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 no. You're going to say no. Remember that crazy Burnside guy at uh, commencement? He says that you have to actively study. And when I say actively study, I mean feet on the floor, elbows on the table, 16 cups of coffee, wrists are writing, and brains are toiling. You have to study actively, or you're going to be wasting that study time. And you're going to work your butts off like an enduring drudge, and it's going to have to be long lasting. Now faith, that's obvious. You're going to need to believe in yourself. But we're human. 
We're human and we have to be honest with each other. We all know that at some point you all may feel this pressure on you, okay? But you're underdogs, you've felt pressure before and you've overcome it. Some of you probably had a hard time in high school. Other of you, others of you have overcome situations in your lives that allowed you to be sitting here and have this great opportunity, okay? So if, if you have a hard time believing in yourself, there's something that you can do. And this is what I did or I wouldn't be telling you this. Uh, there's this Dale Carnegie, he's this famous writer, he, uh, the books that he writes, the wisdom he gives. But like I said, I wouldn't be telling you this if I, if, if I didn't do it myself. And I know Professor Gould, when I say this, will probably jump up and say, objection! But I'm gonna tell you it anyway. If you believe that you were gonna have a hard time focusing because you become anxious or you become fearful of what lies ahead, I'm going to suggest that you imagine what is the worst that can happen if I fail the bar exam? What is the worst that can happen? I'm going to have all this debt. I'm going to have to go live with my parents. I'm going to suffer all of this terrible embarrassment. Okay, here's what I'm going to tell you. Accept that's going to happen. Give, resolve yourself to failure if you're having a hard time believing in yourself and you're fearful and you're anxious. Because here's what's going to do. If you already accept failure, okay, which you're not, by the way, if you already accept failure, you're not going to be sitting there with your 10, and tw 10 to 12 hours of study with your assiduous contravance and your enduring drudgery. You're not going to be sitting there worrying, what if I fail? Because when you worry, what if I fail, then you're going to have a bunch of other negative comments snowball from that. No, 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 no. If you worry about believing in yourself and you've accepted failure, you're going to start thinking to yourself, what if I pass? And then once you think to yourself, what if I pass, then you're going to have positive comments, not just snowballing, but motivating you. And the next thing you know, you're believing in yourself. Graduates, you follow that formula, work with assiduous contravance, enduring drudgery, and faith, you're going to pass that bar exam. Now I want to talk to you about after you pass the bar exam, because you're going to. You're going to want to make your sociological imprint. Notice I didn't say find a job. Under, you didn't come to the Appalachian School of Law in Grundy, Virginia, because you wanted to find a job after law school. No, 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 no. You, you came to the Appalachian School of Law knowing you would be an underdog, knowing that you want to be a leader in your community, and knowing that you want to use the law to, to allow you to help your community. We know that. So what is your sociological imprint? Well, the ASL founders have allowed you the ability to craft your vision of your life's work. And you're going to take that opportunity after you pass the bar exam to craft a mold of what you want your sociological imprint to be. And then once you craft that mold, you're going to go find those positions that fit that mold of what you want to be. Now notice I said you're going to have to go find those positions, all right? See, triumphant underdogs are seeker underdogs. Triumphant underdogs are not wandering underdogs. Wandering underdogs fit that second definition because wandering underdogs, if they were to fail or not find a job, you can hear them say that they are the victim of injustice. No, 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 you're going to go find that position. When you find that position, and when you go for that interview, I want you to imagine the hallway full of the other applicants. But you're, an, you're a triumphant underdog. You, you're going to set yourself apart from all these other law students from ranked schools. And here's how. A lot of students from the ranked schools you know are counting on the fact that they're, they're naturally smart and they're good test takers, okay? But you have had to not only prepare with this assiduous contravance, but you have had to work harder in many respects than a lot of these students from these ranked law schools. So when you go into that interview room, you are going to pro project that underdog spirit to your interviewer. And the interviewer is going to be faced with a decision. Do I want to hire the student or the, the applicant from the ranked law school who had a lot of things given to them? really didn't have to work too hard and maybe thinking that this job is they're entitled to this job or 
do I want to hire the applicant who has demonstrated that they have overcome significant odds, they will work hard, they will prepare hard, they will believe in our cause at our firm, and that they will be loyal. Many of you ha may have had the temptation to try to transfer from the App Appalachian School of Law. You didn't, and you're here. That makes you loyal. That appeals to employers. Let's just say that you can't find this perfect position, okay? Maybe this perfect position to fit your sociological imprint doesn't even exist. Well, the nice part about becoming a lawyer is that you can open up your own law office, all right? And, and when you open up your own law office, you are living the dream of the ASL founders. You are inserting yourself into the community with the specific goal of assisting it and being a leader in Appalachia. That is going to give you an advantage because you're going to think back to when the Appalachian School of Law gave you an opportunity that nobody else would. When you're in practice, you're going to remember that when you meet the client who has had their case turned down by 10 different lawyers. And, those, and you know that those lawyers wouldn't take their case because it was too hard or there was something about that case that would make it too expensive or too burdensome. What makes you special is that you're an underdog. You recognize that they're underdogs and you're paying back the vision of the ASL founders by taking that case. Now, you're just not going to take the case. You're actually going to have a chance to win because you're going to prepare harder than the opposition You've been a triumphant underdog. You know what it's like to prepare. You're going to work harder than your opposition. And you are going to believe in your clients just like this school believed in you. And then when that happens, guess what? You put your client in a position of victory, of triumph. In close, I want to encourage everyone to always act as if you were an underdog because your triumphs will be more meaningful and more fulfilling. As a triumphant underdog, you will always have the power to summon that supernatural force deep within your heart and deep within your mind that gives you the courage to attack every seemingly hopeless situation by thinking clearer, working harder, and believing boundlessly. Thank you.